this was terrorist related, but we don't know. Uh, it's also possible that this was workplace related. Uh, and until uh, the FBI has been able to conduct uh, what are going to be a large number of interviews, uh, until we understand uh, the nature of uh, the workplace relationship uh, oh my between God, a lying uh, man. the who believes individual this character anymore? And uh, his superiors, because he worked uh, oh my with the organization God. where uh, this terrible shooting took this? place. Uh, until uh, all the social media and electronic information has been exploited, we're just not going to be able to answer uh, those questions. You know, he talks to that inner circle of dunces like this, and they shake their heads like in a college meeting. And he thinks that when he goes out on the world stage, the rest of us are those dunces that he hired. But the rest of the world is looking right through this shadowy character. Everyone knows he's a liar. Everyone knows he's a fraud. Everyone knows he's not really conducting a war against the enemies of our freedoms. Well, I, maybe he's right, though. You know, wasn't, maybe it wasn't premeditated. You know, we could say it was workplace related and some Christian inf offended him and said something derogatory about his Muslim religion. And um, he ran to his uh, large blacked-out SUV uh, and put on body armor, had the AK-47s ready, and bombs, because he was offended by the Christmas tree. Now, of course, it was a holiday party. There's probably not even a Christmas tree in America allowed anymore. But let's say just the idea that it was a holiday party implied it was not a Muslim-approved party. A holiday doesn't mean everyone knows the code word for white male Christian racist. So he had to be, conf he had to be, a f he was offended by this. And it's good to know that it wasn't premeditated. He regularly drives around in a large blacked out SUV in body armor with his, uh, with his old lady with AK 47s and bombs made up in the basement. And he needed those bombs and all of those weapons because of the racist nation. I mean, if this wasn't a violent nation, if it was peaceful, like, let us say, Pakistan, or peaceful like Syria, he wouldn't need bombs and guns and body armor. He could just practice his religion of peace. But because of the offenses that he occur, incurs on a daily basis, like pork being sold, for example, and alcohol, don't you understand why? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE-SAVAGE. We don't know the motives. Is it work, rage-related? Is it mental illness? Is it extreme ideology? At this point, it's really unknown to us, and it's uh, too soon for us to speculate. That's the propaganda front group CARE, the so-called leader on the San Bernardino massacre. It may be work-related or mental illness. They had the uh, storyline ready, uh, ready to go. Now, once again, DHS has failed us. Uh, any sane nation would replace the head of the DHS, put in a former combat Marine, a former combat anyone, and get rid of this lawyer from Wall Street who runs DHS. I don't think you've looked into who Jed Johnson is. I mean, just listen to him. You know he doesn't know what he's talking about. He is a Wall Street lawyer. Where is Jed Johnson the day after this big attack in America? Nowhere to be seen. Why is he not fired? A decent leader, a CEO, would fire the head of a department to let this happen. Bingo, you're gone. And we're putting in this person to give Americans the confidence that they need today. But he's no better than his boss. Failed us again. He was on their watch list. Did you know that? Freak was on their watch list. Saeed Rizwan Freak had been in contact with more than one international terrorism subject, subject whom the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Islam, was already investigating. A law enforcement source told the Post. The Federal Bureau of Islam knew that he was in touch with others that the Federal Bureau of Islam was looking at, and he very well could have been radicalized, but they didn't do anything about it because the Federal Bureau of Islam is not allowed to do anything before they kill. That you can thank the legal system for. Look at his name, Farouk, for example. It's a common Arabic given and family name, and it's named for an early Muslim leader named Umar. Go look up Umar. You'll see what a doll he was. When you see early Muslim leader, you'll see murder and you'll see a trail of blood the size of a, a, a Lake Placid. 
But Al Farouk literally means the one who distinguishes between right and wrong. Well, he was just acting out his namesake. He, he didn't think that what these people stood for was right. That's all. And so he, he took things in his, matters in his hands, in his own hands. That's all. I mean, you can't, the man is taught by his holy book to take, uh, any situation and he decides, like God himself, what's right and wrong. All right, look, we can be sarcastic as long as we want. It's not going to change anything. We have a government zero. A zero government. The day after a tragedy like that, we learned he was basically talking to our terrorist, and DHS did nothing, FBI did nothing, CIA did nothing. Name all of the alphabet agencies who are watching you. Where's the great NSA? They're watching every one of us. If you say something to a friend of yours that they don't like, I guarantee you the black SUVs will arrive. Where was the NSA? Where was the FBI? Where was DHS? Why is the head of DHS not fired today? Where is the Republican Party calling for a head to roll, saying, no, we're not going to put up with this one more day? Where is the Republican Party? We don't have one. See, in a, in a vigorous democracy, we'd have a, an angry reaction today from the opposition party demanding that changes be made at the, the upper levels of, of, uh, of the intelligence agencies. But there is no one there. There's nobody home. You know, the old adages all apply. The lights are on, but nobody's home. There's nobody there. There's nobody in the Republican Party. The only ones who are active are running for office. They're useless. They're just campaigners. They have no power, none whatsoever. So the active party itself, the opposition party, at a time like this in a participatory democracy, I should say a parliamentary system like England, they would be having a vigorous back-and-forth argument right now in the House of Commons, and they would at least express what the people themselves feel is going on, but not in our country. Instead, we rely upon drug addicts in the media to give us the rubbish that we've become used to. How do they even pay them such salaries to say such ro rot rotten lies day and night? It is becoming horrific to turn on the media and see these people saying such stupid things after a massacre like this. Well, anyway, there's only so much any of us can do about this. The country is melting down right in front of our eyes because of one Caesar. Every aspect of this country is under assault whether it be homeland security which is non-existent isis rampaging without any opposition to speak of the military is under attack by obama now forcing women into combat roles on the front lines when it's failed even in israel which is an extremely pluralistic uh, military they tried women on the front lines and they had to take them back because it was slowing it was actually endangering all the men in the commando units and they said no it can't work they know this zero education zero culture zero immigration zero religion zero science zero business sense zero liberty zero police so what hope is there i mean I, have you given up hope many people have given up hope and i say don't give up hope when i closed my book i had an epilogue don't give up hope and i i kind of gave you i don't know 40 solutions to save america but I wake up each day, I don't know if this can even happen anymore. Well, close the borders completely for seven years. It's a good idea. Who's going to do it? Repeal the anchor babies law. Who's going to do it? Make English the official language of the United States. Who's going to do it? Require government-issued ID to vote. Who's going to do it? Restore to active duty all the military officers purged by Obama. Who's going to do it? Well, <laughs> it's all in there. And it's a very stark reality that we're facing today, isn't it? And I've given you basically all that you need to know at this point. I love that he wasn't radicalized till he went to Saudi Arabia and he met a bride. So she's actually the one who instigated this. Did you, did you figure that out yet? I love the dunces in the media. Oh, there was a woman. Isn't this odd? Uh Ashley, isn't this an odd situation? A woman terrorist? We've never heard of women terrorists. Why, I never heard of that. A woman, ooh, aren't women gentle? Aren't all women nice and kind? I never saw anything like this. Are these people that brain dead and that drugged that they could say a thing like that on a national television show as they did over and over again? Woman, just shocked by a woman, aren't you? Over to you, Ashley. They forgot that in Paris there were women executing people on the floor of that nightclub. 
mutilating people on the floor with knives. They forgot Russia in that theater where the women and those, those burkas sat with the bombs. They forgot about that. This witch, he met this witch in Saudi Arabia during one of their Hajj jobs. Great religion. Went there for a Hajj, met the woman. She's the one who radicalized them. You can't put two and two together yet? They fixed them up with a terrorist woman. She came back and told them how to do this, is my estimation. Woman, a woman suddenly can't commit um, an act of terror to the dunces in the media. What, what world do they live in? I don't know what world they live in, but I don't live in that world. We all wake up after another one and another one. and another. If it happened again today, tell me what would change. Question for the audience. If, God forbid, another group of Muslims went on a jihad today and did this again somewhere in another place, tell me what would change today. The answer is the same empty fools in the media would, would have their job tomorrow. The same liars in the media would have their job tomorrow. The same useless idiots in the intelligence agencies would have their job tomorrow. The same anti-American fraud in the White House would have his job tomorrow. Nothing would change. So what hope is there? I don't know. We're just sitting here as though a bomb has just gone off. It's like we're sitting here in a room where our neighbor's house has just been blown up and our ears are ringing. Our ears are ringing from the reper from the from the, the the sound of the bomb and we're not allowed to even say what we know is true and what must be done nothing is being done absolutely nothing is being done to stop the next attack not a single thing is being done to stop the next attack there's not one protocol that will change inside the federal bureau of islam not one there's not a single protocol that will change in dhs not one there's not a single protocol that will change in any aspect of this society. Not one. Do you realize it was local police with the Federal Bureau of Islam that took down these two animals yesterday? I'm waiting for, to hear one person on MSNBC say it, it was excessive force. I'm waiting for that tonight. Like, Martha, don't you think it was rather excessive for those police to have chased them in armored cars and used all those automatic weapons on them? Why couldn't they have used a stun gun? I'll turn it over to you, Martha. Well, you raise a good question, uh, Hal. Uh, many people uh, in, in my circle are asking why the police uh, used excessive force in that interchange with this young Muslim married couple. They certainly could have asked them to give up. I mean, don't Muslim lives matter? Didn't they come out with their hands up? I saw one scene where it looked like his hands were up, Martha. Over to you, Hal. Yeah, okay. Fine, I'll just keep going. Three hours, I'll keep going. I've waited all night to get up today. I want to know where the head of the DHS is. I want to know where that Hollywood, uh, excuse me, where the, I almost said the Hollywood actor is. Uh, I meant to say where the, where the uh, I can't distinguish where the Wall Street actor is. He's a Wall Street lawyer from a major Wall Street firm running DHS. Nothing he ever said makes sense, made sense to me. He's a pure political appointee of the Caesar in the White House. Not fit for the job. He's failed us at every turn. He failed us in Boston. He failed us in uh, San Bernardino. Why does he still have his job? Why? Because he does exactly what his boss tells him to do. Exactly why. The only independent person that I ever saw, that I see right now, uh, until now, was uh, Comey of the FBI. I've said it over and over again. Over and over again. He was the one who stood up to Obama and said, no, ISIS is not defeated. No, ISIS has operatives in 50 states. And Obama was very angry at that because the party line from Chairman Mabao, Chairman Ob Obama, was, uh, uh, was violated. You can't violate Cha Chairman Obama's uh, statements. No, sorry, Bob, not in the new freedoms that we have in this brave new world. I just cannot express that how sad I am for, you know, what happened. I mean, I... The condolences to, you know, the people who lost their life. I am very sad that, you know, people lost their life and there's victims out there. Um, I, I wish a speed recovery to them. And again, I, I'm, I am in shock that something like this could happen. I have no idea how, why would he do that? Why would he do something like this? I have absolutely no idea. I am in shock myself. Oh, yeah, you're in shock. Yeah, the brother-in-law of the doll 
Bonnie and Clyde, the brother-in-law, doesn't know 